Well, for Sabri and all of you, Superman is now back on the stage. <laughs> but not in a blue suit, though. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is an honor to speak before illustrious audience. And I really thank Rajiv and his team at ICLIF for giving me this opportunity. Most of you are part, are part of this new economy, uh, digital technology and transformative industry. And it is a real honor to be among the seasoned corporate leaders, entrepreneurs, and change makers who would help shape Malaysia and globe at large. But on the other side, I am working in an old-fashioned and boring industry. Guess what? Manufacturing. But if we don't transform manufacturing, I'm sure we will not go anywhere in terms of job and wealth creation for our people. All of us can't be employed in high tech, right? Someone has to make the food we eat, and someone has to make the plates we eat the food out of. And that that's what partially we do, among a whole lot of other things. Let me share with you a glimpse of my journey as a young entrepreneur. You see, entrepreneurship is like a spiritual journey. Ultimately, it is a very lonely path. It is so lonely because most people do not understand why do we want to do things so differently, work so hard, take huge risks, and put ourselves through a roller coaster. Even today, if you ask my father what he wants Srikant to do, he might have a real instant answer to you that I want him to get a government job and get married to a pretty girl. You know how it is, right? Since most of you are leaders, the thought of working for someone else, let alone for the government, fills me with total revulsion. And that's why, <laughs> and that's why I became an entrepreneur. I am such a rebel that nobody would employ me, including most of you, and even Rajiv, I guess. <laughs> it's real truth. I believe our personal experiences and hardships often shape our journey in entrepreneurship and in life in general. My parents are agriculture farmers, and their day and night hard work gives them less than $2,000 a year. So from a very young age, I was determined not to be a financial burden on my family. Yet, my family gave me at most compassion and care, irrespective of their financial difficulties. This is why I call myself a lucky man, and my parents are the richest couple in the world. Because richness comes from not the money, it's the compassion and a way of showing uh, someone a sensible living. But when I started a school at a government school a few kilometers away from my home, it was challenging, to say the least, because transportation is the major problem we among rural Indians, because we don't even have one rupee of discretionary income in our pockets. So I simply walked to school every day. As a six-year-old, let me assure you, all my senses were keenly developed, simply surviving on the village roads um, without the privilege of eyesight. The other thing that probably shaped me more than anything else is what happened every day when I get to school after a long struggle. Nobody acknowledged my presence. Nobody would want to talk to me, or play with me, rather. So I sat in the last bench, wallowing in my loneliness. Maybe, now that I think, Lord Buddha would have had the same opportunity when he sat in Lumbini before he got enlightened. It was, this, this is the period in my life I felt absolutely poor because not due to lack of money, because I was lonely. And this is the loneliness that I have dedicated myself fighting for to create inclusive and happy worlds for all of us to live in. So it was after two lonely years, my father finally decided that I should go to a special school in Hyderabad so that I could be with kids of my own kind. That was when my liberation began. I started to see what was possible. At Hyderabad, southern cosmopolitan city, I was access to top class teachers, mentors, library, and a peer group that I fit in. Wow. That was 
it was at Hyderabad, I realized nothing is impossible. God can only give starting circumstances, but we make our own destiny. The future is, is in our hands with just enough randomness to make things interesting and less predictable. This is not to say Hyderabad was, an, uh, was not a challenging place for an 80-year-old kid away from his parents for the first time. Of course it was, but the stakes were higher. That was the first time in my life I decided if I'm going to work hard, I might as well aim as high as possible. Think about it. A person breaking stones in a quarry from morning to evening is definitely working harder than any of us. But her productivity is not still enough to bring herself out of the poverty or build something meaningful for her. This is why I tell you exposure at the right age to right things is the most important thing. But what do you do with that exposure? Completely depends on our hard work and talent. But without exposure, hard work and talent won't take you beyond breaking stones. The setbacks I actually had in life enabled me to gain more exposure. I was a lucky once, I thought, be because I gained more exposure right there by, by challenges, because I told you I never see challenges, but I only see possible solutions. When, you know, whenever someone said no to me, I climbed over his head to proceed to the next level. This is the secret in life, guys. The ground level is always filled with no say yes, but as you go higher, You've, you meet people who say yes because that's how they perceive the world. The definition of success is nothing but seeing yes wherever you look. When I saw a small manufacturing sector in India, I saw a lot of problems. Let me tell you, cottage industry is a terrible idea. Cottage industry is nothing but a subscale, substandard, and a low productive enterprise. But if we can't grow, we can't become efficient and innovate. Without efficiency and innovation, we fall further and further behind. We, we decided to employ uneducated and differently abled people as the part of our core uh, workforce. The, the, real the fact that our innovation lies is we create top-class world products by utilizing people who are at the margins of the society. We started Boland to uh, provide mainstream unconditional employment opportunities for the 80 million plus disabled or challenged rather people of India. But other than that, we are purely a commercial enterprise. We have not received one rupee of subsidy from the government. Oh, why, why am I saying this? Why do we receive subsidies anyway? Because uh, subsidies and reservations are meant for vote banks and disabled in India are not part of that vote bank yet. And someday we hope to rewrite that. I had a simple insight that led me to uh, packaging and paper product manufacturing in India, as it was heavily fragmented and dominated by cottage level players using unviable economic models and cash-based transactions. I simply thought if I could bring in my MIT level thinking to a cottage industry, we could simply do a magic. It was later when I met my first investor, he had a different insight from a finance perspective about this business. The cost of capital for these cottage level players is close to 50%. And our idea was if, he could, if we could bring in capital at 15%, that would supercharge our growth. And we did that. Growth is a self-fulfilling prophecy if you convince the world to give you a cheap capital. We are fundamentally altering the dynamics of the packaging industry by creating product that people will be proud of using. Our current expansions will take one step, of, one step forward in utilizing 100% green power and utilizing 100% of our waste into usable products. This brings us to an important question that people always, always ask me, am I married? <laughs> people tell me, you look so young. Yeah, I'm 24 and, and married three years ago to an invisible wife <laughs> and already have a three-year-old child. That's Bolant Industry. And which is growing at 20% a month since our inception. We currently hire about 500 people with, in 10 manufacturing plants, grossing about 30 crore INR. And if I'm not wrong, that's about 20 million ringgits. And we have valued about 100 crores Indian rupees. That's about 70 million ringgits, I guess. And, and our global expansion will take us to the next level of growth 
by next year, and we hope to achieve 100 crores in revenue, that's about 70 million ringgit, with a value of about uh, 500 crores, that's about 350 million ringgits, uh, simply. And you know what? We are still on our day one of our growth. We have a long, <laughs> we have a long road ahead at Boland, and we have to walk miles before we sleep. Before I conclude, so people, three years ago, people looked at my child and stupid. Why don't you smother this child? Because it's disabled, because we hire disabled people. But now, and people simply thought it's unfundable model, but now in, uh, all top global venture firms and PE funds are looking at us and want to be a part of this emerging growth story. So far, we are, all, we are funded by the top angels of the country, including Sri Ratan Tata himself, uh, we, which he, um, as of, and we are happy to tell you, we are his first non-tech investment investee company in his portfolio. In, a, in conclusion, let me share with you the, one of the most memorable achievement of mine as a, as a young social entrepreneur. Three years ago, when, when I entered my factory premises, I heard a loud scream. I was terrified. When I inquired my plant manager, he simply replied, it's a mentally retarded uh, guy screaming in the plant. It was after three years, this same guy who was screaming earlier came into my office with a sweet box and a pretty woman near, uh, with him. I asked him, what's the, what's the reason? What's going on? And he simply replied, take a sweet, and then coolly said, I am married to this beautiful woman. I almost fell out of the chair. And to my surprise, he said, you know what? From tomorrow, don't give my salary to my father. You give it to this woman. And that is the level of transformation we bring among people who are left out of the economy by making them productive citizens and be a part of the growing Indian economy. Oh, by the way, don't be jealous. You can also be a part of our transformational growth story. Thank you so much for listening to me, and thank you, Malaysia.